the link to watch this presentation of uh, Pomona Community Schools bond millage. Uh, I'm Superintendent Dave Ehlers, and I'm going to take you through the overview of uh, what will be on the ballot on May 2nd for our voters. Before we get into this, one of the reasons that we are where we are at with the bond millage uh, before the voters is because our Board of Education, Administration, and staff believe that we need to provide a safe and secure learning environment for all staff and students. We believe that is paramount. Uh, and then the second part of that is we, we need to meet the current and next generation learning needs. Uh, every student in Coloma has a computing device, uh, K through 12. Our teachers use it as part of their daily instruction and lessons. Um, it's very difficult to function uh, in education without it. Textbooks are on there, uh, all kinds of learning assignments are on there. So we need to make sure that we're supporting the uh, technology use in our classrooms through our infrastructure and things like that. So why now? Well, for the last two years or so, the, the board had done an assessment of the facilities uh, and they determined that our facilities are well maintained, but there are some major infrastructure replacements that need to be made. Um, they also determined that the sinking fund that we currently have, which uh, totals around $5 million over a 10-year period, cannot address all those issues. Uh, currently, we use the sinking fund for some minor repairs over the years. Uh, we've repaved the west parking lot at the junior high, put a new roof on the high school and the gym. Uh, we are now in the process of saving enough of the yearly payments so that we can complete the east parking lot uh, on the high school. And then hopefully by the conclusion of that sinking fund, we'll have enough money to uh, repave the parking lot across from Coma Intermediate on West Street. Uh, so that money, and, that, and that, that's kind of how that money was laid out to the voters that we were going to use it. We've also used it for security projects and a few things like that. Of course, the strategic plan adopted by the Board of Education last year calls for modernization of our facilities for our students and our staff. And in the process of doing this uh, and the board's assessment, I think they've done a great job of identifying needs and not wants. Uh, an example of that is, take a look at the picture on the screen. That's a restroom from a 1960s edition to Coloma Ele Elementary. Uh, I believe that is a third grade boys uh, bathroom. Um, it's old, it's dated, it's clean, everything functions, uh, and it is relatively small. So it's time to upgrade facilities like that for our, for our learners. Through this process, the Board of Education listened to the community. They um, had four community forums where they took a lot of input, made some adjustments, and, and finally, uh, late last year, a survey was sent out uh, as wide, wide and far as we could share it. We received 250 responses that also helped shape uh, the presentation that you see before you today. So what does the bond include? Um, we're looking at upgrading old classrooms primarily in Coloma Elementary and in the high school. So the old part of Coloma Elementary was built in the 50s and there was additions in the 60s and in the early 70s added to it as well as what was done in 2011-12. Um, and then at the high school, uh, with the exception of the Fine Arts Wing and the remodeling of the auditorium and a couple science rooms, everything, classrooms exist the way they did in the 60s when the building was built. So it's time to upgrade all those old classrooms. Uh, windows and doors need to be replaced. Ceiling tiles need to be replaced. We're going to install LED lighting. Uh, the flooring and carpet in the elementary is the uh, one by one tile floors you see there in the high school in the lower left hand corner need to be replaced. Mechanical and energy equipment controls at Coloma Elementary is the boiler you see in the upper right hand corner. That's a 1971 steam boiler. Um, it's old and doesn't have much life left in it. Uh, as a matter, in, in addition to the controls for it, are run off pneumatic and air compressor instead of digital controls, which are modern and, and much easier to control and maintain. Uh, an example of a window in the left-hand corner, that's a window at Coloma Elementary. There are many windows like that that are, the seal's been broken, and so they're double-pane windows functioning as a single-pane window, and they're foggy, and the... Um, there's some rotting going on from moisture seeping in around the edges of the windows. We're going to upgrade, have to repave some sidewalks here in front of the junior high and in the gymnasium. 
Um, we're looking at upgrading to security magnetic locks throughout the building. So instead of using keys, we're now using a key fob card, which we're going to do some of that through a grant, but some of that will have to be done through a bond work. And then obviously, if you're going to remodel classrooms and modernize them for student learning, you're going to put new furniture in them to facilitate that learning. And just here's some examples, mostly of the high school. I think you can see my mouse. That's a high school ceiling. It's a high school classroom. Uh, you can see it still has chalkboards in it. Um, this window section here is a single pane window. Uh, there's a window air conditioner that's been installed that doesn't work anymore. Uh, older furniture from the uh, um, early 2000s, late 1990s. See the ceiling floor here has, oh, I'm sorry, you can see the floor has some damage to it and they're going to need to be replaced. Here's the cracking sidewalks. Uh, this classroom is in the high school and has an expandable, that's an expand, that wall will close and, and open. Uh, so it's not the greatest soundproof wall. You can hear a lot what goes on between those two classes. And then along our bus loop, the intermediate, these windows face the McDaniel soccer field. And a lot of these are rusting and are going to have to be replaced as well as the windows are cracked um, and things like that. Some more things that includes uh, based on the feedback that we received, a community student center, which I will cover a little bit of that uh, in, in some upcoming slides. Obviously, technology infrastructure upgrades, make sure that we are supporting the one-to-one -one learning and um, all the textbooks and things like that that we get that are now done digitally. Uh, we're going to make some playground improvements to the intermediate playground, which is currently on West Street. And there's a fence there, but ultimately we'd like to move that to basically where the Allwood Gym sits now. Uh, that would get those kids away from the road and provide some more updated uh, playground improvements for them. That was something that came through in one of the surveys. We're going to upgrade the bathrooms at the junior high and the elementary. Um, as I showed you earlier, a couple of pictures there. And we're going to build just to the north of the McDaniels press box, a small restroom facility, modern restroom facility that both baseball and soccer can use at their events. Uh, we're going to remodel the press box at McDaniels so that it serves dual purpose of press box for baseball and soccer. Currently, it only, you can only use it for soccer. Uh, and they're going to build an awning off of there to serve as a concession stand to service both facilities as well. In addition, the new track surface at our football field needs to be redone. It was The football field was installed in 2011, but the track was installed in 2004. That's nearing its end of life now at 18 years. There's a lot of cracks in it. Uh, it needs to be replaced soon and repainted. And we would uh, also upgrade some of the equipment out there to support track. I think a big, big piece of this bond is the board recognized from community feedback how important it was to provide air conditioning in the old high school and elementary classrooms that are not air conditioned. Uh, they get quite hot in the summer. Uh, we've heard stories of, of losing up to uh, about five weeks of learning a year are greatly affected with uh, lower 90 temperatures in some of those classrooms in the afternoon, which is obviously not very conducive to learning. The Community Student Center is a concept. It's, there's nothing finalized exactly with it. I'll show you a sketch coming up of what, what it could look like. Um, but the, the envision for that is that we would have a, a community center end of that that could be used for Senior citizen group gatherings, wedding showers, receptions, booster events, meetings. Um, that was for, from some feedback from the from the company or from the public that caused that adjustment. Uh, it would have a gymnasium on it um, with a regulation basketball court that could serve as an alternate practice site for our high school athletes and cheer cheerleaders. Um, in the winter, currently, right now, we have basketball. We have practices going on until eight nine o'clock in the main gymnasium based on competitions. Uh, so we would use this to make sure that all our athletes got practice in and out at home at a very reasonable hour uh, instead of staying so, so late. Uh, we would open this up to youth practices after our kids were gone, as currently that's what's done at the Allwood Gym. We would also allow the public in at that point to play basketball or to walk around the perimeter of the, the gymnasium uh, in bad weather to get some exercise. It would be used for the physical education class for our intermediate school. And the community event center on the on the north end that I'll show you here in a section in concept would also be used by the district for staff professional development. Right now, we really don't have a, a site that we can put the whole staff and, and have a, a modern learning facility to support 
their learning uh, to help better our students. The, in order to do all this, obviously we have to demo, demolish the old high school or the middle school, depending on your age, uh, and the Allwood Gymnasium. The old high school itself, that structure was built in uh, 29 or 30, so it's quite old and out of date. And I think the gymnasium was added in the 60s. Um, in the old high school itself, the existing rooms just don't support modern learning. They're very small. They're beautiful classrooms, but they're very small. Uh, the electrical needs in the building would not support the one-to-one -one learning that we have with technology. Uh, things just weren't made for that many plugins back then. Uh, there's a lot of high maintenance needs in the building. You can see through one of the pictures that we've had some water damage through the roofs. Uh, downstairs, there's been some water damage as well. Um, you know, locker rooms aren't used. We don't need the building. We've not had students in the building since 2014. Uh, and so currently it's just used for storage. It is very inefficient energy. Uh, the walls are not insulated. The roof's not insulated. There are single pane windows. Uh, it costs, um, over a five year period, it costs more to, sorry, in a single year, it costs more to operate the Allwood Gym in that north building, which we still have to keep relatively um, warm around 50 degrees in the winter than it did to, can, to heat and cool the uh, intermediate building over a five year period. Um, it is not very free accessible. There's nothing in that building that's handicap accessible. So you see in the upper right hand corner of your screen, those are steps up to one of the bathrooms in the building. All four bathrooms in that building have steps up or steps down. And when you got in, there is absolutely no room for a wheelchair. Uh, based on square footages and alignments, if you could compensate for the, the steps and get a wheelchair in there to make a bathroom handicap accessible, there would only be one stall in each of those bathrooms. Um, again, we're going to provide better physical education facilities for our students instead of the old Allwood gym. Uh, again, I mentioned community access to the, uh, the gym with barrier-free toilets in there. And then our internet, our intermediate school would be attached to that gymnasium at the main entrance. Um, and that, that would be great. And we'd have some improved parking there on the north side of, of if you can envision where the, the old high school is now, there'd be some improved parking there to facilitate both the intermediate and the elementary schools. Here's what the architectural concept is of the, uh, the new community slash student center. Uh, it's about 18,000 square feet. Um, you can see it's got a basketball court running this way, a full regulation, and it could be subdivided where there's two basketball courts running east and west on your screen, left and right on your screen. Uh, is attached to the main entrance of the intermediate now and kind of sits where some of the footprint is for the no old high school. The playground has moved now back around here to where the old Allwood is, so it's protected from the road. Uh, here you can see this large community room that can be subdivided. There's a, that would be a collapsible wall. There would be kitchenettes in each corner uh, so that if you were having a shower or a lunch in there, you would be able to take care of that, those items yourself. Uh, there's a long vestibule hallway that would be security locks that would separate this from the Allwood gym. I'm sorry, from the new gymnasium. So there could be things going on here in the day uh, and we could still restrict the movement then not to intermingle with the kids. Uh, there's a storage area here, a men's restroom, a woman's restroom, and then obviously elect electrical, mechanical, uh, and storage area in that facility. Uh, it would be our goal when this is designed to incorporate uh, architectural features and things from the old high school into this building so that the history uh, is not lost on that building. We understand how important that building is to the community and what it means. And so we don't want to forget the history. We want to make sure we honor that by incorporating that in the new design. Everything I've talked to you about today is uh, $28,250,000, which comes in at a millage rate this year of 0.99 mills um, to be paid back over 25 years. Uh, going back to the beginning of the slides where the board was doing their work, it was very important to them to keep this uh, under one mill to, to respect our taxpayers and what they contribute to our school district. And so they were able to do that and get all this needed work done. Uh, that equates to if you have a $100,000 market value home, $49.50 a year or slightly less than $5 a month. You can go to our website. You can see it down at the bottom, uh, www.ccs.coma.org. There'll be a pop-up box that will take you to the bond page. 
And on there, we have a tax collector. You can actually put the exact value in your house and it will tell you what you're going to pay in taxes. Timeline for this is basically a, a two year timeline, uh, two or three year timeline, um, two phases. If you think of a high school phase and an elementary phase, you would, if the bond were to pass in May, the next school year with the high school would be designed with input from all the stakeholders. The following summer that would be constructed. The following school year, they would do the same thing, design and take input from the elementary staff and, and stakeholders. And then the following summer, of course, uh, build that then. So over a two or three year period, that would be done. Uh, and then the Allwood would be, the Allwood in the North Building would be destroyed and the new gym, once designed, would be built. Uh, and I think that would be more than just a summer project. Important dates for you as stakeholders to keep in mind is that uh, as of March 23rd, some of you probably had access to your absentee ballots uh, coming out to you. So now those are out in the mail and if you don't already have one, you should be getting one soon. And then May 2nd, you can vote in, uh, vote in person at your precinct and we would encourage you to do so. I'd like to thank you for your time uh, on behalf of the school board and myself for watching this and becoming informed about the bond. We encourage you to vote. If you have questions, my email address is on the screen. You can get answers there. It's not Coloba, the, drop the P out of that. I'm sorry for the typo. Uh, and also, again, if you go to our webpage, there are a link that will take you to pictures and more information than what I provided you here. Thank you again for your consideration on this and please vote on May 2nd.